Okay, hello everyone, welcome back, hope you're doing well. And today we're gonna to continue with our second year statistics and today we're gonna to talk about one-way ANOVAs and then and the next one we'll talk about the cross Willis, so kind of the non-parametric equivalent. So first things first, so we've got staff in PABs, so the pharmacy and bio biological sciences, and just to see the effects of different statistic classes on aggression in undergraduates. So following one of three different stats classes, 12 students were placed in a relaxation room with a dartboard with a picture of the stats lecturer faced pin up to it. And the number of darts thrown by each student was measured. So what we're looking at here is, so students were placed in different scenarios before being placed in this relaxation room. And then we just looked at how many darts they threw at the lecturer's picture. Yeah, we can see here, um, if we think, really think about it, so these one way and overs is no, nothing to fear. I think it's just basically a continuation of the t-test if you've got more than one group. So it allows you to compare. In this case, we think we're gonna do three different scenarios and it just allows it to compare in between them and then report the data. So don't worry. So yeah, let's jump straight into Jamovi. Okay, so we're in Jamovi now and we've got our lecture. So uh, class type here. So this is what happens before they were placed in the relaxation room. So these students were placed, we had a lecture, these had a seminar and these had an exam. And you can see how many each student drew uh, at the board here. So yeah, we kind of expect um, this number to increase, I guess, as the type of class gets more intense. But yeah, so yeah, always have that back, back, back of your mind why you, what you think was gonna happen. So what we need to do, simply go into ANOVA here and then we're gonna go into one way ANOVA. Okay, so we're here now. We know that the, the groups are, di are all different and they don't um, kind of impact each other. So if one student went to a lecture and the other went uh, to an exam, we obviously know that the amount of darts they threw had no effect on each other. So this is why we're doing this one way ANOVA. So if we put class type into our grouping variable and the dependent is again, the thing we measure, so darts in this case. So what we need to do, uh, it will load up, but obviously we need to check our assumptions once again for this. We just untick that. So then we first we've got homogeneity and normality that we need to check. As you recall, both of these need to be above 0 0.05 in order for the test to continue. So we've got our normality, which is look at the p-value here. Uh, so that's above 0 0.5, so that's, that's good, that's check. Uh, and then we've got an homogeneity, which is again above 0 0.05. So that's all good, so we can untick those. So because we were assuming equal no normality and equal variances, we can then simply press fishes here, which assumes equal, as we just talked about, and we get our statistics. So again, we've got this F statistic, we've got degrees of freedom, as we did in the previous, in the regression lecture. So we again, we report that and then our p-value again. So because this is below 0 0.05, we can again say that the data is significant in this case. So that's that's all good, but let's get some more information. Uh, let's get a descriptive table so we don't have to go back into exploration. There we go. And now post hoc test, so that gives us a bit more detail about the data and it gives us a comparison between these three. Because we again, we assumed equal variances in the homogeneity test, we go for two key here. Okay, so we've got our data here. Each one of these is basically a comparison here. So here we're comparing uh, exam to lecture, exam to seminar, and then lecture to seminar. Okay, so we've got our data here. So we've got our p-value and our mean difference, but again, we wanna have a bit more data. So we have the T statistic and the degrees of freedom. And yeah, we don't really need the mean difference, I guess. So if we untick that. Okay, so we've got our T value. So again, we report that degrees of freedom and our P value. So as you can see, there was a significant difference. Uh, so if you imagine we're doing like a T test here and we're comparing exam to lecture, there was a significant dif significant difference in number of darts through compared uh, exam to lecture. And again, compared from between exam and seminar. However, if we compare lecture and seminar, which I guess you can say they're kind of the same uh, complexity level, so they're not too stressful, there wasn't a significant difference as we see by this E value above 0 0.05. But it's also good to report that too. Okay, so we've got that here. Yeah, we'll jump into and see how do we, how would we report this? Uh, just a quick note, because, uh, as you may have noticed, we don't have our effect size uh, in that case. So to do that, we can work out by hand. So we've got X, X line, so that's our, uh, as I mean, basically. So the mean of one, so for example, if we say the lecture was our kind of base, we call that the placebo. So then if we've got exam, uh, the mean of the exam, so the mean amount of darts, take away the mean amount of darts through and after the lecture, and then the standard deviation of the, the lecture as well, and that will give our D, which is our effect size. If we then see how we will report this, so you can kind of have two, two, two parts to this. First, we report our main 
statistics that we found. So there's F degrees of freedom and P value. So we can say that the overall test was significant, that it had some sort of purpose. So we again report the sub value, degrees of freedom take away F statistic here and a P value here. And that tells us there was a significant effect. Then we look at the post, then we look at the Chuki post hoc test. And uh, what we basically say, so a Chuki post hoc, so that's what we did here. That's the Chuki here. Post hoc test revealed that having an exam, and then we write, um, because this is a parametric test, remember, we still are, write our mean and standard deviation. Revealed that having an exam before being placed in the relaxation room significantly increased the number of darts thrown compared with the lecture group. And we saw that by this t p value of this t test being below 0 0.05. And again, we need to add our mean and standard deviation. And this represents a, a large sized effect. So what that means, because uh, we're comparing exam and lecture. So what we what we did, we got a mean from the exam, take away the mean from the lecture, and we divided by the standard deviation of the lecture, as we saw by this formula here. Again, we compare, then here we carry on and compare the exam and seminar. So again, we write our mean and standard deviation for the seminar group, and then the T statistic comparing the exam and the seminar group. So it kind of doesn't doesn't really matter as you, um, how you word it as long as it makes sense. Effect size here in D. And you could, also you can report there was no significant difference between lecture and seminar groups. And it's uh, good to put that in, good practice to just report everything. And yeah, that was basically it for the one way and over. Just a quick one on how to do it. Yeah, hope that helps. So you kind of think about, again, one way and over as being a continuation from the t-test if you're comparing more than one group. As you recall, so this is kind of the independent t-test continuation. And then obviously the man at Whitney U would be the non-parametric equivalent. But in this case, we've got the cross call Wallace and over. And we're going to look at that in the, in the next lecture. So thank you for watching. Hope you, um, Hope you enjoyed and learned something. Don't forget to check in the description for any links you might be interested in. And yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.